So today we're doing a recording of Over Dungeon. This game is amazing. Uh, most people haven't played it because they haven't um, elicited a uh, proper following. Uh, this is partly due into many different reasons. Number one, this is a Chinese-based game. It was developed and made in Chinese, uh, Mandarin. And then I believe it was put through a translator? Or one of the employers was just like, I totally speak the English. And they translated it over to English. Uh, because of this, there is a few problems with the uh, translations and the way the English is written. Uh, as a for instance, if you look... <gasps> no. Don't know if I can do this without you being able to see my mouse, so let's do... that. And that. That should do. That. There we go. I actually didn't do it like this because it just barely doesn't fit on the screen. There we go. And pull that over. Okay, so um, I have to move. play with it when the time comes is what we'll do there's the back button down there that's all that's important right now so um the music is phenomenal the sounds are super loud so i'm sorry ahead of time um there you go and uh so what we're gonna do here is we are going to uh, show you over here on the side here you can see how it's written um, Over Dungeon is now official released as opposed to Over Dungeon is now officially released and there's a lot of uh, little nuances like that uh, as you go through the game the unfortunate part of it going through the game like that I'm sorry it's a Japanese game Japanese not Mandarin Ch Chinese um, <clears throat> so the reason that's important is they actually uh, use descriptions in the game that if worded very awkwardly, which makes it a little bit difficult to know what you're doing if you don't um, play it. <laughs> so you gotta kinda like figure stuff out as you go along. Um, so we're gonna start with the basics here. This game is based off of card packs. So you've got three characters. You've got Lilith, Valley, and Sugar. And then these are their free, three starting card packs. And what this means is, is if you've ever played Slay the Spire, you ba get to pick from you don't get the pick. You get random cards thrown at you, and you're just like, oh man, what am I gonna do? I hope I get the catalyst to increase poison damage, or I have catalyst, where's my poison, damn it? And this game is awesome, because what happens is, is you pick three card packs every time you go in, and those are the cards that you're choosing from. That's your card pool. So you're far more likely to find uh, the cards that you want to use uh, in a deck that you're building. So as a for instance, this is Lilith. Um, she's the first character. She's very easy to play. And with Lilith, you've got Crossfire, which puts mortars, which are buildings. And you'll see that. I'm, I'm going to play a few rounds so you guys can check it out. Uh, the Bomb Tower is another building. Uh, she's got the chicken. And the chickens produce chicks. And you'll grasp what that means. These are animals. So there's animals, buildings, spells and attacks and those are the four card types those are the only card types um, and I'll go into why that's important a little later on for some ridiculous a friend of mine and I found last night um, so strike bear is an attack you can see where it says attack right next to my mouse there it deals 22 damage and you gain a barrier now the cool thing about this game is is it says barrier and then it tells you what barrier is down here if you right click on the card it tells you what the upgraded version of that card would do um, which is really important and easy to see. 
Uh, you can see I still have a locked card here. I do know how to get it, I just don't want it yet. And I'll explain all that once I get to that section of the, what's called the quest mode. Excuse me. <coughs> so, <coughs> with Lilith, there's a few different ways you can take things. Uh, <coughs> This turbo engine makes it very easy to build buildings. Excuse me one second. Because the working speed of build buildings means that crossfire here puts a mortar. Mortars repeatedly attack the enemies with fireballs. So if it's uh, boosting the working speed, it actually attacks faster. And eventually it's just like this flaming column heading over to the enemy. And it's, uh, it's super duper cool. Um, sexy beam here, which is one that you can't see. I really don't know where webcam should go here. It's fine. Uh, sexy beam, gain control of all enemy animals. That's a super important aspect of this card. It's the only reason why it's any good. Uh, 20 damage is quite piss, and the overload doesn't really matter. Um, but you can see Lilith's Hope. Uh, deals damage equal to two times if you're missing HP. While that seems like a small number when you're playing normal, there's this thing called Arena Mode where this card is detrimental to the enemy. Uh, in Arena Mode, you fight bosses and your HP is multiplied by 10. So instead of having 200 HP, you'll have 2,000 HP. So this one card could do almost 4,000 damage if you're really, really low on HP. And for the most part, with those fight you you get low on HP pretty quickly um, and that's really it <coughs> for Lilith's packs you can see why this is a really good building uh, deck because it's got really good buildings that are just in the main part of her character and then you've got the turbo engine now this is the only place turbo engine shows up Lilith is the only one who can get it um, because like I said when you pick your run you pick the three decks you're using the first deck is always the character you're playing the second deck can either be any of these four, and the third deck will be another one of these four. So you could do like Animal Village and Card Dance, Animal Village do, do Tropical. Um, so Valley here, he's a second character. He's a little bit harder to play, a little more difficult. Uh, he's more animal based. You can see that with the legendary sword here. What this building does, it attaches one sword to your animal when they're summoned. Um, so the swords deal an extra damage and then when the sword is detached, it deals 10 damage to the nearest enemy. There is some crazy stuff you can do with swords and animals in this game that is just tons of fun. Uh, one of the cooler parts about him is he has a card called Heartless Strike. So every deck uh, in this game starts off with what's called Overstrike and Two Strikes. But this deck doesn't start off with Two Strikes, it starts off with Shadow Strike, which gains you Int and a Strike to play, which is weird but it gives you another card to use it does a small amount of damage um, <clears throat> because when the int goes up it counts as an attack thus making this do five damage um, when the time comes he also starts off with a crossbow so this uh, crossbow can summon three and what it does is it attacks the nearest enemy it does not attack the enemy leader um, that's really important to to understand uh, Gallop is an animal move, self sort of alpaca. Alpacas are a uh, little llamas you put on the screen. They have taunt, they're awesome. Uh, the cuddling rabbits, rabbits are pretty cool too. You can see they summon seven at a time. Okay, so we keep going down, and you'll see there's a lot of attacks. There's a watchtower, um, which is a really good card. I didn't notice before. That's super duper good for this deck. Anyway. You get the Watchtower, uh, Dark Matter, but Thousand Blossom deals 5 damage or 20 damage for each sword you attached in this combat from start to end. So what that means is, every time you summon something and it comes out with a sword, this does an additional 20 damage uh, just for playing one card. And you'll see how that plays a little bit later on. We're going to go through each of the characters in a straight run. Memory Burst, super fun to go. Super fun card. You can get decks up to 80 cards in this game, and it'll play them twice if it's upgraded. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's just, <laughs> it's pretty, it's pretty wild, man. 
Uh, Into the Wild is okay. Um, Mega Morph is very, very nice. Strength, HP, and size are increased. Uh, that means the animals do more damage, their size gets bigger, and they have more HP to tank stuff. Like, it's, it's pretty nice. <coughs> His main card is Limit Break. When you upgrade it 99 times, it, it transforms into Omnisword. Omnisword says, Enemy Leader meets their demise. We haven't had a lot of time to play with this card or see how it's going down in Chinatown. Uh, so, I'm not sure how good and or bad that would be. I don't know what that means. Oh, yes, I do. That is nifty. I'm going to have to try that card out. Okay, so the last one, so that was Valley. Valley's really good at animals and attacking. Uh, Sugar, now. She's the advanced character. I find her to be one of the easiest to play in the game. It's just, she's phenomenally easy. And that, that is in turn because of this. Okay, so Motivation Switch is a trap that you put down and it grants two int for each animal on contact. It means anytime one of your animals or one of your enemy's animals goes over this trap, you get two int. Uh, int, as you can see there, attack cards deal extra damage. For every one int you have, extra one damage they deal. So if you have a card that deals damage multiple times, you're just, that's 2 times 7, 2 times 14, 2 times 20, like that starts to add up very quickly. Uh, the fact that animals touching it is what causes it to trigger um, <laughs> just makes it ridiculous. And I'll, I'll show you when I play her because that's one of my favorite, favorite ones. This trap deals 5 damage to an enemy leader for each animal in contact. Now this is a building, right? It can never do more than five damage every one time an animal touches it. Um, which is kind of shady, but it's it's fine, I guess? Because the way you do things is like the chick switch. So this summons one chick for each animal except chicks on contact anywhere. Uh, anywhere just means you can play it anywhere on the field. Whew. Why this is important is because you set this up behind the motivation switch and the execution button. What it does is it'll summon additional animals to go over those buttons and when they go over the buttons or the switches or the traps or whatever you want to call them um, it does some gnarly stuff uh, bear trap deals damage to enemies on contact meaning that uh, the animals move towards you and you're um, so when they're moving towards you it'll deal 25 damage which you're like oh 25 is not that much it can kill a dog straight out just from touching it it can kill a mouse um, does she have bears on her main no I'll show you bears uh, it does significant damage to bears because it summons two traps, and if the bear hits both traps, um, it's just really good. The sugar trap is a, a new card I got for. <laughs> it turns an enemy animal on contact into your unit, and that is pretty spectacular. Yeah, and it seems crappy because it says you have to have three or more traps on the battlefield. But look at this. That's two traps for one card, two traps for another, two for another. So that's... That's six. That's twice as many as you need. Just two other trap cards down, and you've got this going. This one sets four traps as opposed to two. Like, it just gets pretty ridiculous. Egg Bomb is hilarious. <laughs> it does 25 damage, um, and it summons 20 chicks. So, you literally, like, chunk an egg at the enemy, and then it explodes into a bunch of chicks. And chicks do damage. They're weak and small, but they do six damage, um, which is nice. And you summon tons of chicks all the time. Uh, Pact of Negation uh, basically just interrupts the attacks that are supposed to deal you damage uh, from the enemy leader. And that's that's a pretty good card to use as well. Okay, what's important about this one, the dual crafter, is remember the traps are technically buildings. See right here where it says building? I was about to point at my monitor. Like, <laughs> you all can see that shit? Yeah, so see how it says building? Uh, this has set one trap that freezes enemy animals on contact. Now what's important is these are buildings. And we're going to get into why that's important when I'm actually in the middle of the run. Uh, delay choice is also pretty cool because you get to play the last played non-phantom. Phantom is basically a fancy word for the card was added to your, uh, your hand in that combat on that turn. Um, it is really nice. Um, then we keep going down. Close your eyes. And I mean, it's okay. 
it gets you your enemies' animals as well, which is kind of cool. I haven't played with uh, Reality Leap yet, so I don't know how grand that's going to be. And then Sparkling Witch turns into Grand Chariot, which does 45 damage to one random enemy seven times. And you'll see, again, you'll see seven times. Um, <clears throat> it's okay. Like, it's definitely a way to make your, your extra damage do more work. Uh, bumper bounces animals back on contact. It can do this multiple times to an animal to constantly charge them to go over the same trap multiple times. Um, so that's Sugar. She's trapped. He's more of like an animal and she's more of like buildings. Uh, so you get your four regular decks here and we're just going to go into it. I'm not going to keep going through the card list. Uh, I just know they're pretty awesome. Is there any worthwhile? Bears. So bears have 230 HP. That's a lot. I also pointed to my monitor, even though you couldn't see it. <laughs> so they have 230 HP, and they've got uh, 30 attack. Uh, black bears are the one of the best summons you can get in the game. Is it down here? That's a different one. Okay. Um, <coughs> so yeah, there's not really much. Uh, nests and the sheep hut. These are buildings that go down that summon constant units. Uh, to go towards the enemy, which is actually really important uh, in terms of strategy. The Sly Bunny is also really good to use because it gains control of the nearest four enemy animals. Uh, and it doesn't matter what the animal is. It could be a giraffe tank, it could be uh, elephants, it could be uh, anything. Uh, card Dance is basically just like a round and about. It's got a lot of cards in it that are really, really cool that every class could use ridiculously. For instance, the Knife of Determination says deal one damage, gain int equal to the damage dealt. If you upgrade it, it does not exhaust. So you would exponentially gain intelligence. Uh, I call it intelligence because int, I used to play D&D. &D. Uh, you'd constantly gain int in an exponential way uh, every time you use that card. Um, it's very important to note that where it says card danced, legendary is in parentheses at the top here. Um, in the red lettering and this is a legendary card this is epic and then you've got rare which goes down to common and then there's also one stars which is the original starting cards that everyone starts off with um, yeah you can see there's a trap in here it's a magic amplifier it gains you int every turn but it's only five turns go pretty quick though so don't let it like fool you Whew, and then ultimatum ultimatum is a crazy ass card. It is a winner. Uh, it is the final attack. It gives you full burst, full burst. What it, this only thing ultimatum does. It just transforms into full burst and gets sent to your discard pile. That's it. That's that's all it goes down to. So full burst deals twenty damage, and then you repeat this effect two times or one time for each attack you've played this combat. That is super important. It just shoots a bunch of missiles at the at the, the enemies. It's just it's ridiculous. But it only hits enemy leaders. Very important to note that. <clears throat> so these are a few of the high points. King of the Beast summons two lines. Lines out only have a hundred HP, and they deal thirty attack damage. So they do the same attack damage as the bear, but they don't have nearly as much HP. Side stamp from that, they also uh, do a melee AOE attack. So they like swipe with their claws. And it's everything in front of them. It's really good for swarms of uh, swarms of animals. Whew, that was Zoo Tropical. Nope, that was Zoo Dance. So Factory is more of a buildings. It has a lot of buildings in it. You got the Plasma Sputter, which upgrades all cards in your hand for the rest of combat. If it's upgraded, you've got the Speed Gear. Draw extra cards. Cannot cycle. Your buildings deal two extra damage, which is how you'd increase the damage of the traps. Oh, that is. Um, That's interesting. Electro Discharge, another great card. Deals 15 damage uh, twice for each of your buildings. We'll get into the traps once we start doing the sugar run. But for now, we're going to leave this alone uh, to explain as to why all these things are just amazing. Uh, Fire at Will is another one of those weirdly worded cards, but you can't really understand what it does. So what this says is attack range of all of your ranged attacks becomes infinite. Note, your units no longer attempt to defend. So I'll show you when I'm playing Lilith on the first run here as to what that does or what I'll explain how that works without actually using the card because we won't be using the card this time. Oh, it's factory. Animal Village is one of the unlockable ones. You do not start off with Animal Village as an option. It has tons of animal stuff 
It's all kinds of awesome. This is called the Super Chicken Horse. It's become one of my favorite cards in this game. It summons one chicken, horse, sheep, and elephant, respectively. And all of them are applied with Mega Morphin Rage. Like, it's just phenomenal. Uh, apple pain just means apples go in your deck. <coughs> they say it's a pain, but it's really not that bad. <coughs> uh, I can show you what apples do. Mouse Cage is hilarious. So you can see right here it says Mouse Cage. Sometimes it produces a bear mouse, which I thought were pandas, but nope, they're just bear mouses. And I didn't know that was a thing. It made me really excited. Uh, you also have Am Animal Town and then Safe Wind. And these are two really, really good cards if you're trying to put as many animals on the field as possible. Uh, and then Mass Animal, another important one. This is an attack. It deals 10 damage for every animal you have. Well, that sounds small. Remember, you can increase your int and... <laughs> The amount of animals you get on the screen is, is actually pretty ridiculous. So that's a really good card as well. So the other cards here, let me show you the apple real quick. Which isn't your another, oh that's right, it's a shop card. But the apple increases your animal's attack speed by 10% in this combat. I've had it up to as high as like 250% increase uh, animal's attack speed, and I didn't really notice a difference. Um, I will tell you, that I did notice that my animals stayed alive longer because I think they were hitting faster, which means they were killing more of the enemy animals before they were killing them. So maybe it's like a first strike thing? I don't know. Uh, this is the shop card deck. These are all cards you can only find in the shop. And they are always the cards you can find in the shop. Uh, that does not change. You cannot find these anywhere else. They will only come up in the shop, including, haha, the giraffe tank. <laughs> <laughs> it deals 100 damage, straight up legit deals 100 damage, and it's got 100 health. Uh, I have only, I've never put this card into a deck of mine, because it's, it's just goofy. It does take 8 seconds for a reload every time, but it does 100 damage when it actually is. And uh, the giraffe is just standing on the side of the tank. Like, that's, that's legit what's going down in Chinatown right here. Uh, no, I have, um, I've brought them over to my side, to the dark side. Uh, but I've never actually purchased the cards. So those are all the decks you've got right there. Now also like Slay the Spire, you've got relics. Now you've got the basic relics, the ones that everyone starts with. You've got the common relics that show up all the time. You've got the rare relics, the epic relics. Now this is, and the legendary relics. This is the coolest thing though. They've got Act 1 boss, Act 2 boss relics specifically. So defeating the Act 1 boss, you will receive one of these out of three. You, have to, you can pick from three. Uh, but you'll get one of these, no issue. Act 2 boss, you'll get one of these. But see, there's no overlap here. So, like, defeating the second boss will not give you a common boss relic, which always pissed me off. Um, there's also a smaller chance, or a greater chance of getting something you want for the build you're going for. Because it's just pulling from this tiny pool here to show you three, which is pretty awesome. Uh, the daily challenge is something I'll show you, again, while we're doing the runs. But yeah, so it's got the relics. They all do crazy awesome things. This one, for instance, summons an additional animal when animal summons more than three animals at a time. And that's really, really cool, really, really fun. Uh, every time you play two animals in a turn, summon three chicks. Awesome fun. You draw an additional card at the next turn if you don't play an animal this turn. <coughs> that one's important for the building build um, with Lilith because with the buildings, you don't you don't summon animals. It's just, you don't do anything. <laughs> Oh boy. Alright, so we're gonna hit back. This is to show you kind of what we're looking at. This is my play history. Uh, this is Sugar. We were testing out uh, builds for her last night. Um, this is Lilith. You can see we've got the turbo engine here with opening. Opening says have it in your opening hand. Uh, even though it just says have opening again. Bad translation. I'm not gonna make fun of it again. Just to understand that's what it means. Uh, two ultimatums because that card is amazing. And then, <laughs> then we got Makeup, Fantastical Card, and Concentrate. Uh, Encore was what I was playing with uh, to see how it would work. It actually worked really, really well. Uh, as you can see, Ultimatum exhausts itself, which means it's removed from the game uh, for the rest of combat from your, your deck. And Encore plays the exhausted cards in this combat twice. So if I use both of these and then Encore, I get four full burst pluses as opposed to just two. And that's, that's pretty... No, I get six as opposed to two, which is really, really nice. Uh, there was no other exhaustible cards in this deck. Yeah. 
these are literally the only exhausts, and I just use Encore to get more, more attacks. That's uh, that's terrible. All right, so here's another another ability to see turbo engine on the opening. Very important thing that I like to do. Uh, having that initially is pretty good. This was in the quest. Okay, don't trust these decks. We're not gonna look at these. These are terrible. So we're just gonna start a new game. <laughs> so like all roguelite games, uh, you start out at level one and you build your way up as you go through. Uh, this is a deck building game. So you start off with uh, the basic deck and then you build your deck as you progress through the dungeon. Uh, we're gonna show that through the basic dungeon here and then we're gonna look at the other aspects uh, of the game. So you've got enjoy this one. My five-year-old daughter can play with no assistance and win every time. It's really, really fun. Um, but we always play on normal. Now the important thing here is, is the arena, but we'll explain the arena here in a little bit. So we're going to start with Lilith here. You can see she starts off with the blood potion. She restores 10% HP at the end of combat. Uh, that's the end of combat. So this works a lot like, if you're familiar with Slay of the Spire, it works a lot like the, um, the flamey thing that uh, Ironclad gets. Uh, we're going to start with Lilith. We're doing fun stuff with Animal Village and Zoo Tropical, but we're going to switch back to Zoo to Card Dance and Factory because I know this works out phenomenally. Whew. Okay, so here's the basic layout. You've got the legend on the left. These are treasure chests, a bench, shop, rest site, elite, normal. Does it look familiar yet, Slay the Spire players? And uh, then you've got this to go through. So the boss appears at 10 floor, which is the 10th floor. Um, and right now this is floor one, two, three, four, five. So there's treasure in the middle. If there's a treasure at the top, you're not fighting the boss yet. When there's an, a fire at the top, you'll see it'll work. So what I like to do in every character is I just go for the elite fights um, because they drop relics and relics are still pretty important. So your first turn is very, you can take all the time you need. He's not going to attack. You're not under any kind of crazy stipulations. You just uh, go for it. So this is uh, what this guy does. And I'll show you that next time we're on the thing. So I'm going to play the mortar. And then he gets an apple because he's got apple topping. Uh, he gets an apple because of his Destrudo. So he gets one apple every time a building card is played, which seems like it's going to be a problem. It's actually not really okay. We're going to throw a strike at him because he's only got 140 HP. Now that turn has actually begun. This is the game going. So this is the turret. It's just firing a constant stream of fireballs. We've got over damage, which does 100 damage, and this is my timer here. So we're going to overstrike him. Oh, I was too late. When we get the chance, I'll overstrike him is what we'll do. And then... You just play until you only have two cards left down here. And that's it. And I took the damage, but I healed it up. Suck it. All right. So this is me winning. And you get your gold. Gets piled up right here. This is my continues, and this is my life total. And you, as usual, you get to add one card to your deck. Normally, I'd add Heat Reactor, but I don't... When you're playing buildings, you don't really want to... What's the word for it? We'll probably take Charge Beam here. Uh, when you're playing buildings, you want to let the timer run out as far as possible. A uh, Don Toro's going to be a bit of a bitch. Actually, may I have to use continue on this guy. He's he's like the unfortunate uh, first boss guy. So we get spikes. Spikes reflect five damage every time it receives damage by an attack card. Very specifically, an attack card. So. We're going to just do this. You can see there he's still on the lion. I don't really want to take all that damage. There's a little more alpaca and the assault ponies again. We're going to summon an elephant this time. So we're going to charge him up. It's okay to take a bit of damage because I heal up at the end of uh, the fight for like 20 HP. And then we're really going to just send it home here. I see these two turrets on the side are defensively attacking. You see blue balls coming from these three characters. If you use fire at will, what it does is, is it, uh, it makes it to where these guys don't attack the dudes in front of them. They attack the enemy leader, and that's all they do. And that's super useful. You can see it's doing three and six damage, which is pretty important. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, so I got a relic. 
Uh, this restores an extra 20 HP when you take a rest, just like resting at a campfire. Uh, Spark is going to be the choice here. Ooh. We're still going to take Spark. Uh, now, after the battle, it shows you how many times you played each card and how much damage each card did. So I played Charge Beam four times at a total of 190 damage. I played over Strike two times at a 230 damage, Strike 107 damage. Uh, so we actually kind of need to go this way because I need that fire. This is the store, fetch your money. Uh, these are the cards that show up. These two are store only cards. So like that shop uh, card pack I showed you, that's where these cards show up. And then these are the any cards from the packs you've chosen. So we've got like the Unstable Portal, the Tesla, which is a building uh, that attacks enemy animals only. It also has Taunt. Um, and then you've got three relics to choose from. Um, that one's probably going to be the one we choose. We're going to card service. We're going to sell a card. Ooh, that's rough. I actually want those upgraded. We'll sell Spark for now just to get the Orb of Destruction. The Horn summons a random animal every time three different animals are played. And then you can draw two additional cards at the start of a combat after you rest at a rest site. Uh, but I actually don't intend on resting at a rest site, so I'm pretty good. Of course, there's an upgrade. The one card I kept for it to upgrade is cool. That's why we have the rest site, right? So the rest site, you fully heal and you get one extra continue. Super duper important. Uh, but for right now, we're just gonna upgrade Charge Beam here. Now, <clears throat> this is terrible because you can pick uh, multiple things to look at, but you only get one. So every time I play two attacks in a turn, I gain four ink. This looks like it's going to be an attack-oriented uh, go round. Um, we'll do a rest site here, and we'll fully heal because we're about to go into two elites, as you can see here. So now I have two of the golden hearts and then 200 HP. So we're going to take on the two elites. We're going to do Plasma Cutter first. Now these work like the Sentinels work in uh, Slay the Spire. So these two fire one time, this guy fire, it's the opposite turn. So you're going to want to kill one of these in the side first. Um, then we'll Alpaca to not take any damage. Alpaca's taunt, you see his attack went from me to the Alpaca, which is quite nice. Uh, so we're going to strike him and then overstrike him. And these work like dazed. The shivers are basically just dazed. Throw down an assault pony. Let me kill him. As you can see, the fireball here is my ink going up. It's not looking good before there. Crossfire. It's one of the cards I need for this build. So even though we're going attack damage, we're still going to take crossfire. Dawn Turtle, you son of a not a fan, John Turtle. Not a fan. So we're going to try and just wreck this guy as best we can. Overstrike's going to be the death, but these crossfires are going to bring him closer and closer, which is what we're really looking for. So Overstrike is now upgraded, so it does 164 damage, but it overloads too, which is a tad problematic. Uh, we'll throw that down. He doesn't have as much HP as he did before, which is kind of silly, but you do what you got to do. We'll throw down a mortar. So now we have three fireballs hitting him in the face. 174, so we're going to strike him twice, and then kill him. <coughs> Back up to full health. Okay, so that was the money. This is the relic I get. It's uh, the increased enemy gold drop by 25%. It's really, really nice. You generally get that on every run. I have yet to come across a run where I don't get it. Headhunting Rabbit is an interesting card. So it's an animal and an attack. It deals 48 damage to all enemy leaders. That's very important. So we're going to grab that. Uh, it allows for me to do a massive amount of damage with my int growth. We're actually going to upgrade Crossfire. So Crossfire originally only builds one mortar on each side. Now it builds two mortars on each side. And that's that's a really big increase. It's double damage on a consistent basis. Magus is pretty fun first boss. Do -do 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 -do. Start with a tower, then we're going to do a headhunting rabbit. 
and then two alpacas. So you can see I have two of these cards here. These are shocks. Okay, I receive two damage at the end of my turn. They're unplayable, right? Um, but you play cards until you get down to two cards. These count as cards in your deck. So I can play everything I had. He just gave me four damage so I can play the rest of it, which is pretty, pretty flipping nice. So we're going to attack him, and we're probably going to overstrike him so I don't take all of this damage. So he dies and comes back as another, which is fine. Um, we're going to just strike this time and throw down an alpaca. We do head hunting rabbit over yonder. I'm just going to put him there. Okay, so we're going to hit charge beam, crossfire. So now we have six turrets constantly hitting him for one damage. Doesn't seem like a lot, but it's doing it constantly, um, which is pretty important. We'll just decide how we're going So with this, you can see my turn is going, and he's consistently taking damage. Now, if I were to end my turn by playing two cards here, um, it would suck. Because... Douche. Um, because if you do that, then he gets a turn and he has the availability to do more damage. You can see right now he's summoning uh, something. Um, so we're going to just charge beam him and we're going to throw down an alpaca. And this is the timer for the turn, so you'll see me wait until this goes as far as it can possibly go uh, before I do anything. So that way my mortars get, the more, get more of a chance to destroy everything that's going on up here. And... Um, See that the ring goes all the way around and then it fills up with red. And when it gets to the top, that's turn over. I don't like any of these cards. <coughs> okay. So we're doing a building deck here. Also an attack deck, but we're not doing an animal deck. So we wouldn't need the animal summons or the animals doing additional attacks. To these. So we're going to take the buildings to get built with a barrier. And I'll show you what that looks like when the time comes. Uh, this one. Now you can see there's a money amount under here. I can spend my gold to see what the other options of the path would be. Um, I don't generally do that. I'm just like, okay, I want to go this way, so I'll just take this fight on. But there are some fights that I like to avoid. And it's not that I don't win against them. I would just like to avoid them because they're super duper annoying. Summoning bears, summoning the burrs. Uh, we'll charge beam you. Alpaca. Alpaca. Charge him. Okay, so we'll put down two more crossfires. You'll see they've got this blue orb around them with a one. Uh, that means they cannot. That's the wrong one. I'm gonna have to do it, aren't I? Really don't want to. It's fine. Probably should have hit him, and then he would have died when the turn started, and that would have given me the uh, the thing that I needed. Penguins. Oh, they're so cute. All right, so we're gonna put down another charge fire, and this kills him. Overstrike has overload too, it means the next turn I draw two fewer cards, which means I can't play as much on the next turn as I played this turn, which is kind of annoying. We're totally taking makeup here. Uh, an upgraded makeup actually draws a card, which makes it a super useful, super duper useful freaking card. Monster House. Okay, so when you hover over it, it says Jack in the Box. Summon one random enemy animal every time attack or animal card deals five or more damage to the enemy leader. Uh, so what that means is when I hit him, for five or more damage, he summons uh, a random animal. And that becomes important because I didn't know that because I played Lilith for so long, that big old booty, that um, I, I use buildings and they don't do five damage. <laughs> so this guy became more difficult for me. Uh, just hovering over the battle tells you what's in that battle. And then when you get here, you see it said Jack in the Box 1, and then you hover over the ability over his head and his HP bar, and it tells you what that ability does. So you'll see with Crossfire here, 
I'm not going to have a difficult time. An attack? He summoned a giraffe tank. Phenomenal. Uh, so we're going to use makeup here. It's going to upgrade everything in my deck, which is really, really nice. So we're going to head hunting rabbit here. And then... Uh, you know what? We'll just strike him twice. Doesn't necessarily matter. Uh, so overstrike does a lot of damage, but it also, again, gives you the... Uh, the disadvantage of you know having an overdraw for the next turn, so that's kind of annoying. Uh, so we're gonna use that. We're gonna throw down a few llamas here. Oh, I should have done that. That's okay. They had barriers. We're fine. We're gonna throw two more of those down. Uh, and I think we're about. Yep, we're almost there because this does 174. So you can see I'm letting the timer run out here because he's not going to get to 174, so I'm not going to be able to kill him. Uh, but he will be very close to death. You can see he hit me and I went down to 32. There was no way to save that HP though because it was the giraffe that hit me. So this is Cherry increasing my HP by 10%, giving me 220. And now I believe it's time for... Continuous shelling. It's a pretty good attack. So we're gonna hit a question mark for you so you can see what they look like. Um, so it's called Whisper in the Dark. I can lose 10 HP and fight him or I can add a strike plus or a wound to my deck for absolutely zero reasons. So we're gonna lose 10 HP and we're gonna fight him is what's gonna happen. Uh, it's just two, wo two wolves. Not terribly concerned with them. Um, we're gonna try and take this guy out first because uh, he's in the way. They summon dogs, which is kind of annoying but fine at the same time. They do that. So. When an enemy leader dies, all of their animals die as well. So it's, oh shoot, that was not smart of me to do. I thought it was upgraded for reasons. And that's it. See, my health is going up way more. Charge beam plus, I like it. Um. So normally I would go to the fire here because I super duper need to upgrade like my makeup card or my continuous selling. However, you can see, this is what I did last time. I get these three and even though there was nothing here, it becomes an option. So in order to get the most option out of these treasure chests, I would have to take the event encounter, um, which is unfortunate. Give me the regular one. Ooh, spark. I wanted to keep that from earlier. Grenade here, every 10th attack turns your hand. Actually sounds pretty good. Uh, we don't play animals that often, and we want to play buildings, but we're not playing those that often. We're actually playing more attacks, so we're going to keep the attacks going. Uh, of course, we're going to take on Monster House. And because you can only pick the ones that are, like, right there, um, it makes it a lot easier to uh, gauge where you want to go. So it's kind of nice. So we're going to put a mortar here, it's going to make that line go that way, which is really nice. We're going to do headhunter just to get a rabbit out there. We're going to try to keep him distracted as long as possible is what we're going to do here. So we're going to continue shelling, should play, yeah there it was, awesome. So we're going to upgrade that, or play that upgraded, and then we're going to throw an alpaca way over there. So alpacas have taunt, you can see a little axe on their back, and it tends to work out phenomenally. We're going to do two alpacas way far to the right. But they're still going to try and go that way, which is super duper nice. Uh, we're going to crossfire right there. And then strike plus him. But we remember, we got to have our buildings do a lot of damage here. So hit that, and then we're going to spark him. And that kills him. So whenever I deal 100 or more damage to an enemy leader, I build a random building, which is fantastic. Uh, Plasma Cutter Plus is one that I was looking for. It upgrades all the cards in your hand, which is super duper nice. Um, campfires don't really matter. This is a sale as well. There's different kinds of shops and different kinds of everything. Like, it's, it's freaking amazing. Um, none of the cards that I want, unfortunately. So we're going to go to card services, see if there's not a card that I'm willing to sell at this point. Um, I have two charge beams. I think that's one too many charge beams. 
So we'll drop one. You just get money for selling a card. It's it's pretty awesome. For 143, that is super worth it. Um, opening to a building is also super worth it. And again, I don't really care about the start of combat only after resting. Like, you rarely rest in this game. It's pretty easy. Uh, crossfire is what we're going to start with. So we're going to hit the reroll button because this is a sale shop. Don't really need that. Don't really need that. Don't really need that. And I uh, don't need anything up here, unfortunately. Barriers are nice, but I don't really need to flood the deck with some craziness. So you can also go into debt. So that gives you a debt card in your hand, which is very annoying, actually. Um, hmm. <laughs> if Spark was upgraded, I'd probably copy that. But in terms of removing a card, I'd probably remove the Assault Pony. So I think we're just going to remove one card. So we don't really want the pony. Uh, even the rest sites can be different. Uh, I don't think we'll find it here. Yeah, so this is the rest site before the boss. So it's always just like a regular rest site. Um, we are going to full rest to show up in Spark. I think we need to upgrade Spark. Or makeup. We need to upgrade makeup. It super duper needs to draw us a card. Uh, so the second round, or the second boss, is the duel. So you can see I went to 13, 30, 2200, and he's at 2000. Uh, she's at 2000. Uh, that worked out really nicely. So we're going to continue with shelling it. You can see he had the two cannons in the back as well, and it took out one of those cannons, which is super duper nice. They do not count as an enemy leader, though. So Hunting Rapper will only hit the main character here. You can see that was just the one bunny coming out. Then we'll throw down two alpacas over there. And I still take 50. Uh, so we're going to plasma sputter that to upgrade the cards. Take a boat ton of damage. I should have waited for these to shoot a little bit more. That was me being too impatient. Uh, so we're going to do this here. Let them start firing off. We're going to hit that. See, we're looking right here to see how much time we have left in the turn. That way, all this stuff does the most damage as possible. Makeup, plasma sputter, continuous assault. Into the strike. Okay, so now we have Spark does this times two. This should kill it. 65 times five. Oh, it's hit the any enemies. That was unfortunate. I oh, mean, I'm really taking a beating here. 65 times 2 here. Oh, that was the end of the turn. Shoot. That was not smart. And then we have to overclock to kill him. Overstrike to kill him. Whew. That was close. Okay, this is an upgraded King of the Beasts, which normally would be amazing. But actually, this barrier generator here is what we're going to take. Because it's really, really good. Okay, so these are um, the cards you can get from, or these are the relics for the second boss that I was showing you earlier. Uh, then you turn discard all of your hand except one random card. Basically, you just retain one card for the next turn. Uh, cards generated during the combat will be removed immediately. You don't receive curse during the combat. So what this means is like the shivers and all that stuff just wouldn't wouldn't show up in the deck. You wouldn't be affected by them. Um, and then this one gives you extra draw, which means you draw an extra card at the start of every turn, which is amazing. And it deactivates every three turns. What we're actually going to do is, is we're going to take this because it's got the extra draw on it. Um, and I'm not generating any cards into my hands or my deck. So we're pretty good. Um, multiple ways to play this. So we're going to see what this is first because this, this is Act 3 technically, right? Right here. And there's some super duper annoying full honky that goes on. And it's, it's kind of... I think we're good at just doing this. Uh, so that orb there was what his intentions were. He was trying to put uh, strikes in my deck, but he couldn't because... So what we're going to do is we're just going to wait for this timer to go because we've got our damage going through. And if we can kill these stupid towers, that would be phenomenal. They're so dumb. 
spark it for four four times 57 damage so we really need that spark upgraded um, needs a strong word but it's a fun one so we grab a few more 10 more intelligence there and then we should be able to finish it off here yeah you see this character is very laid back you just chill generous rabbit is amazing so we're gonna take that <clears throat> I think we're just gonna go that guy's actually hard to... Fuck you, dude. Come on. I'm going to take him on anyway. He's very difficult. Uh, he's got this, which deals 3 damage to enemy who deals damage to him. So, for instance, when these go down and they start firing on him, uh, he's going to deal 3 damage to them, and it's, it's going to be super duper flippin' annoying. That's all it boils down to. So we're going to throw two alpacas there, and I think I want to overstrike him so bad that we just throw two more alpacas at him. That's fine. Um, so we're going to put a barrier generator here. You see all of them are already dead. The generous rabbits, because they're hilarious. Headhunting rabbits, because they're hilarious. Let me spark him. This guy's just constantly dealing me three damage, which is poppycock and bull nuggets hilarious. And charge beam. So we're going to get a lot more damage done. That's what we're doing currently. So we got a spark in hand, so we want to try and like make as many as possible in terms of cards played this turn. So we're going to strike, and then the last one is going to be spark. And then, uh, he would have died. He would have died! Alright, now he dies. See, that guy's just super annoying. That's all it is. Ugh. He refused to let that crap go. So we're going to take crossfire here, because it's already upgraded, and that's awesome. I'm gonna try the shop. Oh, another sale. That's excellent. Demonic gift. No. Dreams removed. Drawing card. No. Growth pod is like one of the best things ever. And they got crap cards here, so let's see if there's a card I want to sell. Honestly, I'm thinking crossfire maybe. Or barrier generator, because 400 gold is a decent amount. <sighs> Something good. No, nothing. Nothing anywhere. We can, we can take that just to take it, I guess. Or if that's like super, super duper crappy. Oh man, he can't re roll again. Son of a gun. You know what? Take the giraffe tank. Never had a giraffe tank before in my deck. See how it goes. <laughs> <coughs> Alright, so he's got this sheep hut behind him, which is super interestingly interesting and hilarious. We're gonna giraffe tank it up. Look at this guy. Uh, it's a giraffe on a tank. Now he's ready to fire. So this is the first turn, so nothing happens on the first turn until I finished the first turn. Um, so we're just going to spark. Oh good, it killed off those buildings. That was really nice. Okay, so we start off with makeup. And what you're going to want to do is go like really slow on your card usage here. So we're going to charge beam. Continuous shelling. So you see this went down. So we're going to hunting rabbit there. We're going to strike. And then we're just going to hold on for a second. Generous rabbit. Boom. You can see his health is just steadily going down. Generous Rabbit is useless to me. That is super unfortunate. Means I gotta sell that card next time I get the chance. Charge Beam. Sputter to upgrade that. That kills it. Let's take a storm plus here. We're getting a decent amount of damage. What is that? 
Whoa, that's cool. I've never had that gun before. But enemy dogs will be yours is too good to pass up. Man, I really want that gun, but no, 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 no. If you can take the bone, take the bone. Uh, we'll do a campfire. I need, I need upgrades in this deck like super bad. Like the giraffe tank. I can make two giraffe tanks. Or spark. The spark's really tight. So if you see what it is, it's a spider. Spider super easy. He just, just come at me, bro. He's gonna try. He's gonna fail like miserably. Another giraffe thing. It's like it's an it's got opening on it. It's crazy guard. It's crazy awesome. And then we'll just strike fast too. So, <coughs> excuse me. An alpaca was probably better to play there. Just like for the record, I just chose not to. So we got storm. Cool. We'll put an alpaca over there. Oh, and spark. Oh shit. 49 and then 49 times 7 and then 49 times 3. Oh, 53 times 3. Cool. I guess. Okay, so we make up plasma cutter and then overstrike doesn't. So you're going to take any damage there? We're going to. Okay, I don't think I have any spells actually. Like, that's a spell, I guess. Make my first turn a lot better. We'll take it. And I give it to makeup anyway. <laughs> <coughs> okay, so this it really doesn't matter. The whales. Uh, give you chill, which gives you jamming. And if you look, jamming receives one jamming at the end of your turn. Auto exhaust jamming. Have damage dealt by attack cards in one turn. Well, he can't chill me because he can't add cards to my, my deck because of this crab claw here. So I will not have any issues, I don't think. So, headhunting rabbit, oops, charge beam should have been first. Throw those down, and then we're going to storm him. Lock on, I don't know what that does. This is a power attack and reaches zero. Oh, good lordy. Okay, so let's strike him. Get you speed gear here to get a spark, good. Two more crossfires. Another strike down a mortar and then this should 53 times 6 which is phenomenal he's, he's got a lot of HP for my, my not having a lot of HP but it's, it's fine Get a giraffe tank should have plasma sputtered first oh god no and continuous shelling found nothing in there look at him summoning all these giraffes you jerk okay so now we want to do head hunting rabbit and then the upgraded strike and then the storm. Okay, so I have a lot going on here. And what we're going to do is, is we're going to try and slowly play them out and play Spark Last, basically. What we're looking to do is get as much damage on this guy as possible. Probably should have played that first, actually, so it just started going. Then we're just going to wait a little bit, and then we're going to play Spark, which is 79 times 6 damage, which is pretty nice. It hit some of the giraffes. Oh yeah, two giraffe tanks just because it can. That's exciting stuff. <clears throat> All right, so we get two picks here. Bolt from the blue, amazing card, amazing. I'm going to just take that right off the bat. All oh, this is garbage. It's garbage for what I'm building. They're not just garbage cards, except for that fucking moonlight one. Okay, so this is the last time I go in. I'm not going to show you the egg. Um, but think of it like Slay the Spire's three three different um, colored key things. When you get all three, you get to go to an additional place where you try and fight the heart and that jazz. This is what the egg is. There's some kind of wish in here or something. Um, so we're actually just going to full heal and take continue. Uh, this is one of two last bosses. This is the dragon. You can see he's got flight above him. Have the damage taken. Uh, lose flying when receiving 2188 damage. So it is. Oh man, these stupid freaking lions. I really don't like playing against this guy. So we're going to attack from the blue and then we're going to spark. Yes! Awesome. 
Okay, so like he summons more lines behind him. This is so annoying. Uh, just like this particular guy. Oops. So we're gonna do that. And then speed gear. We're gonna generous rabbit. That. We have spark, so I kinda gotta hurry up here, unfortunately. Or storm, sorry. The storm just hits him. I forgot about that. Yeah, they're taking out my stuff. God, like jerks. Spark plus a head hunting rabbit. Giraffe tank. Alpacas. Head hunting rabbit again. Storm and Spark, so we're gonna do Storm first, Spark second, and kills those little bastards. I'm not terribly concerned with anything that's going on. Like, if I die here, it's not a big problem. Uh, it's a very small one. I have five continues, so it's not like a huge issue. Okay, so now I have Storm, which dropped him down, and just like the flying enemies in Slay the Spire, uh, he gets paralyzed for like one turn. So what we do here is we put down some stuff to do some damages, and then we wait our turn out, because he gets up after one turn, right? So then we just wait to get our spark on, it's 121 times 6. And boom, look at that. The extra buildings are coming from this and doing more than 100 damage for an attack, which is pretty cool. Three giraffe tanks, holy nuggets. That's awesome. And we just got 124 damage with this, which we'll probably play an alpaca instead. Okay, so we're gonna open it. Spark, good. Plasma sputter. Then we're gonna storm him once the time comes. Okay, and then he's just dead. Boom. That was an entire own floor. Now mind you, I have done a lot of work to get this far, but see the egg. To be continued. The wish was not fulfilled. Oh god. Uh, and this is the deck that I used to go through there. Uh, it was just a fun deck. We're not really building right now for the arena but when we do good lord okay so that was just a basic dungeon run uh, but there's all these other different modes that you can play into arena is a big one um so these are all enemies that have these cards in them like it shows you what they have um we're gonna crawl over here uh self-assertive so we're gonna prepare for battle and what that means is you get to choose the deck you're going to use so this is the deck i'm going to use it's got a uh, memory burst in it Got a bunch of sly bunnies, chicken nests, sweeps, just the whole nine, right? So I'm gonna hit start battle. Now I'm sorry ahead of time, but this is just too good to let go of. So we have a fireball to start off with, which is kind of unnecessary. Uh, what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna play the super chicken horse, and then we're gonna do opening memory blast. Try and draw as many cards as we can here, which didn't work. There it is. Uh, that's unfortunate. Okay, so we're gonna throw an alpaca down, throw the cuddly rabbits, throw down a sly bunny, a sly bunny. Having the sly bunnies is actually gonna be kind of helpful here. Um, we're gonna fireball, I guess, like just his face. We're gonna throw down some assault ponies, we're gonna strike him, and we're gonna shadow strike him. That's it. That's the turn. As you can see, all of my animals got summoned. They're all going in to whoop on, whoop on some ass there. It's pretty good. Has to wait for his entire turn to finish. Uh, we're gonna fireball him, but I should have sleeping. They hit all the enemies a billion times. Freaking nuts. Shadow strike. And just a regular strike on him. So you can see these are the cards he's using as the boss. So he's using ang self sort of angry sheeps. And the like. So we're gonna we're gonna gather that guy there, put down an assault pony, and then strike him in the face. We should have this this time. We've only got one continue, as you can see. I didn't do very well in this run on building up continues, but it's fine. It's not like a huge super duper deal. Oh my gosh! If I could just 
get my cards for the next turn. That'd be slow. This starts to become an infinite combo on hard mode. And he's gonna kill me. But I got him more than halfway down. Unfortunately, we'll be able to do the same thing again. Yeah. There's just too much. See, so it, it eventually becomes infinite. So I have one turn to deal 8,500 damage to him, basically. Um, I don't have anything scaling in this deck. So we're gonna Sly Bunny. Crossbow down, which doesn't matter. See, he's still going off. And as soon as I end my turn, it's done. That This is all I can do. Oh, hey, that worked out nicely. We're gonna opening again, hopefully get something going. Sly Bunny in some of those, some of those dudes back to me, please. Those guys over there. Hopefully I get another turn. That's all I'm hoping on. I don't think I will, though. That's just it. You can't uh, you can't fight his infinite combo. He's still going, by the way. You can't see it, but his cards are still still going into his discard here. So that's just that's game. Now that's a failed attempt at an arena. But give me a second, and I'll show you a, a non-failed attempt. That guy's just ridiculous. The infinite uh, infinites. The way that that works infinitely is irksome and, and crappy. Hold on. Uh, the main issue I have with the deck that I have right now is I've only got one um, We can take one I think Yeah uh, So the issue with this deck is I've only got one continue on it The one continue means that I don't have a lot of room for wiggle And because it's an insta burst deck Um Oh god, really? I made a mistake. It's okay. This is the deck we were just playing with. I might still be able to do it. I'm not sure. Uh, so we're gonna draw a couple of cards. We're gonna Plasma Sputter. Put some more in the background here. Bolt from the blue gets me more intelligence. We got a Strike, a Storm, and a Spark. So we're gonna Spark first. Then we're gonna Storm. Excellent. So again, what we do is, is we just wait uh, about as long as we can wait. Uh, giraffe tank will go off to this side here. Uh, so they can do as much damage as the buildings as, the, as they can. Uh, generous Rabbit is fine. Strike is fine. I'm just going to throw down a Headhunting Rabbit. Just before the time. So now we've got uh, a lot of stuff upgraded here. We're going to try and make a huge utilization of that. So we're going to throw that down with an alpaca. There's the last card I can play, so we're going to spark. Times seven. And he did 50 to me, which is not that bad. Um, so we're going to strike times two. We're going to throw down another giraffe tank up yonder. Strike again times two. Throw a mortar there, and then we just storm it. Uh, so we're gonna open everything up. We're gonna throw down more of these, throw down more of those. We're gonna try and continue our shelling here, and then 219. It's not enough to finish the battle, so we're actually gonna throw down the alpaca right there. And normally you shouldn't do that so early, but these llamas were coming at my buildings. I want to make sure that I'm not going to take uh, unnecessary damages. So he's almost dead. And that kills him. Beautiful. Uh, so that is an arena. Um, that one you saw was just, again, he goes into a continuous loop and it's impossible uh, to get past it. I am going to finish this one off. Knowing that I have to push over to start battle.
got 19,530, which is just crazy. So you're going to gain 5 int to start. I'm going to throw down a Sly Bunny, and then we're going to totally shoot the opening normally, um, which gets us a bunch of stuff to use. Another Sly Bunny. Apple, Apple, come on. Apple, crush and grow. Sound of ponies. Apple, Apple. that was it yeah, you can't really see what's what's in these stacks either which is kind of unfortunate uh, crossbow back here hopefully this is gonna be enough just strike him put down an alpaca and then use this again So he throws down animals as well. If I can get him low enough, I'll, I don't have anything that scales in this deck, which is unfortunate. Like it all, this all gets exhausted. All these cards that were used. So if my stuff goes away, it's basically that's that's as far as it goes. So we're gonna slide bunny there, grab some dudes, those in the back corner, and then throw an alpaca down over here. Oh right, you need to use a strike. Okay, so Crushing Sweep was really good that I got to keep that, because I can take out all his freaking animals. It's pretty important. Throw down an Assault Pony, and I'll back off to my right. That's a lot of buffs. Just need Crushing Sweep, boom, got it. Kills them all. Fly Bunny. Did not grab that dude, that's interesting. We just wait for all this damage to accumulate on him, and then we throw out our last strike. Because the other thing is, is we get more chicks on the board too, which is pretty, pretty cool. Put three more of those down. We're gonna slide bunny so we can get some of these elephants on our side. I think we're going to alpaca over here. And the elephants just attack this guy too, which is pretty nice. I'm going to put down those. Okay, Sly Bunny. Grabbed one of the dogs, good. Um, and we'll strike. And again, we're just going to wait for these crossbows to do some work. Put that down. This is going to be a tad tedious, but it'll be fine. Oh, I need crushing sweep. That's unfortunate. Just click. Sly bunny, get some. And I'll back up if we can. Oof. Crushing sweep this turn. You know you wanna. Awesome. Okay, I probably should have sly bunny first, but that's all right. We'll throw that down. Sly Bunny. Uh, and then I guess we just strike him. See where that's gonna go. Oh, shit. Cool, he has Crushing Sweep. That's just phenomenal. Makes me, uh, makes me happy. Uh, you know what? Let's just Sly Bunny one of those guys. We're gonna wait a little bit and throw an alpaca here. Perfect. Bunch of dogs. Oh, the mega morphs on the son of a gun. Fly bunny, come on, give me some. Didn't get nearly enough. Alpaca. Is that enough to do some work? Maybe we'll just throw an assault bunny down going his way. Get some swords going up. Uh, let's put these over here. Grab that tank for ourselves. Ghastly crushing blow. We'll throw an alpaca over here. It's actually entirely luck based whether this deck is going to win or lose. And that's that's kind of unfortunate, but it's the truth. So the luck part of it is if I have enough cards that deal enough damage left over after I use the opening cards to play through my entire deck. Uh, then I will be okay. <laughs> but 
basically. That's, that's as far as it goes. That's all I've got. Oh my goodness, Sly Bunny, Sly Bunny. Give me the elephant, sweet. Okay. Uh, nope, we're just gonna slide bunny that because I'm looking after a Critical strike him. We're now pack over here. Looks like he's summoning again. You can tell these are the cards he'll be using. So there's a lot of summons coming next turn. I hope I have enough cards. Card draw and all that jazz to just grab that alpaca. Give it to me. Yeah. Put down to the bottom right. That's a mega morphed alpaca. He's he's pretty big. Okay, so we're just gonna strike him, I think, because playing the Attack points to make a hell of a lot of sense. Okay, he got almost nothing that turn. That is wonderful. We're gonna grab some of those. We're gonna strike him. Whew. And then we're gonna strike him again. Uh, you can see this turn is gonna try for another big go here. Oh man, he took out my towers finally. That's unfortunate. Refreshing sweep will take care of all of this bull crap. Just grabs one or two. We'll salt pony, and then we're gonna put down slide bunny. And then this will be last. Didn't work, but we gave it a shot. Oh my gosh. So I'm probably going to die here, but I have one continue, so that's fine. Give me the polar bear. There we go. Good lord, crushing sweep. I guess we're not going to die here. Look at me do stuff. I'm going to assault 20 over here. Maybe it'll hit this hut back here. I don't want him to have that hut. Like, at all. Fly bunnies, turn stuff around. Battle ponies. Strike. Alpaca. Man, I was kind of hoping I got to keep those fly bunnies. Nice. Yes, I'm not like that. Let's just go. These are all going to get to me if I waited there too long. Hopefully he doesn't go off on an infinite combo. Crushing sweep. Yeah. Joy, he's off the crushing sweep. I just hit him with the other thing I had in my hand. Just go for that, fuck it. No crushing sweep? Come on, man. Okay, so the important thing here is once I die. Everything I have on the field stays on the field. That's why I put the ponies down. He's going to do some janky shit. I'm going to hit continue. And all his animals die. There's no crushing sweep in there, so I'll throw out two alpacas. And our last thing will just be a strike to his face. <sighs> We're close. If we just had any kind of scaling, it would have been amazing. Crushing Sweep would be amazing right now. I don't even know if it's in my draw pile or not. No way, dude. Come on. Ah, crush, Crushing Sweep. Go, 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 go. Throw it at him. Hit the ones nearest to you. Goddamn goober.
So yeah, he keeps firing into everything technically that's on the screen. So we got dogs and more sheep. I am so fucked. That's what I am. So again, this is a luck based deck. Uh, hopefully I get lucky enough to not die. Yeah, see, this, this shit going through is just... Come on, man. Pressure suit. Nope. Spy bunny. More of these. Strike. Am I gonna survive? I just need these ones to not kill me and I should be okay. Nope, he critted for 76. Ah, and that stupid combo is going over and over again. Yeah, so that's not the deck for this... This fight, I should say. Tell you what, though, I'll probably be able to do it with a different one. The Limit Breaker is also pretty difficult. Anyway, so that's Arena. You fight, you can see, you have to build your deck while going through the basic dungeon, season dungeon, um, or the daily, not the daily challenge. So season or basic. And then you take the deck into the Arena and fight crazy bosses with crazy abilities with infinite combos, which is just batshit crazy. Uh, here's Quests. It's one of the last modes I'm going to show for this video. Uh, so what you have is, uh, this is perfect timing. I upgraded, so I leveled up, because you get experience for every time you go through the dungeon. I got three skill points. These are using the skill tree to gain, these are titles. Uh, reach the capsule skills to obtain a title, which will activate a special skill. So, getting, for instance, the five lightnings, activated Lilith's Hope. I have Valley's Hope, and then Sugar Hope. It's one I haven't gotten yet, because I don't really care to get it. Um... Animal Villages release is uh, you unlock the card pack Animal Village, which is a super duper good card pack for the record. Uh, all the rest of these things you just do uh, to get. I'll show you how in just one second. I'm working currently on this one, I think. No, this one, because that's the one that I want. So you go to Animal. I'll show you again. Hold on one second. So I need Pep Talk and Command to be level max to get Armored General. Armor General says at the start of combat, summon one giraffe tank and one X crossbow, or one X bow. So I want to get that. So to get pep talk and command, I have to go down this entire line. So we start on heating, you upgrade it twice, it goes to level two, and then you put three more points into it, it goes to level three, and then four, and then five, and five is a level max. Whew. These things that happen here, for instance, mutate 3% chance to summon one random animal when a card is exhausted. Command increase animal power by 70. These only work in quest, uh, in quest mode. And quest mode is this. So if I hit next, I just start the next go. And the next go says every time you add an animal building attack to your deck, add two additional copies. Triple arrow is there for a special relic. Uh, specified card pack means when I go in, it's going to be valley with zoo tropical and animal village. And then enemy enhancements, everything has double HP. So that's it. So when I go in here and I hit next, I'll start here, and then I'll go up two floors to get to here. And that'll give me a treasure chest. Uh, so this one uses Valley, so we're going to do Valley next. I'm going to take a quick intermission. Um, and step outside for a second. Maybe get a water, because water is delicious. Uh, but I'll be back in two shakes for Lance Joe. Try not to die.